there were so few blacks in college or in graduate school working in the sciences. And I felt that if we could create a program that I, I would support students as if they were my own children. And my idea was to have a program where I would have a certain mass. In other words, I thought we'd have at least 10, 10 to 20 students working together as a program. I thought we could produce that. I spoke to Bob Emery uh, the, of the uh, Abel Foundation, and he said I should really talk to Freeman Rabowski, who was the vice provost at UMBC. When we started this program, we did not know that we would be successful because I had never seen a predominantly white university producing large numbers of African Americans who were able to go on and get PhDs and MD PhDs in science. And that's, that's phenomenal. Becoming from the physical sciences, and in particular physics, uh, this program is, is, is really needed. Um, today, and this has been this way for quite a few years, the number of uh, African American physicists um, that are produced per year in the United States is on the order of between 10 and 15. We have diseases and issues and questions and problems that affect you know, every different type of person. It doesn't matter what your ethnic or racial background is. And people tend to work on problems that are, they can more comfortably identify with. So if we don't have a diverse group of researchers, there are going to be a whole lot of biomedical issues that really aren't studied adequately. I felt that if I accepted the scholarship and did well, then I could be a positive role model for them. The most beneficial factor would be the warmth I feel from the other persons in the program. I feel like I belong with them, and I think they feel like they belong with me. It's not like there's just one student in a crowd um, of 2,000 or 3,000 that is an intelligent and young African-American student, but instead there are over a hundred students just like you. That's my career goal. I would like to build and design robots. My major is biochemistry at this point, and when I graduate, I definitely want to go to med school, but there's a possibility that I could do an MD, PhD. My ultimate goal, maybe say 20 years from now, is to be a dean, dean of Harvard Medical School, or um, maybe head of NIH, something like that. So I think that whatever I aim to do, I've, I've aimed to be one of the best. In recent years, our research has examined African-American Meyerhoff students who entered the program and comparing them to students who were accepted into the program but declined the offer and went elsewhere. The African-American Meyerhoffs were almost six times more likely to enter PhD programs in science and engineering than the comparison students. But we have a pipeline of students. We're talking about hundreds of students who've gone on to get PhDs, MD PhDs, and MD degrees with hundreds of students in the program right now. So there's a pipeline. And universities and colleges come from around the country to look at what we're doing and how we're doing it. We've become the model. Well, first and foremost, these scholars are going to make scientific contributions, and they will. Second, I want them to be also role models 
and, and mentors to others and examples, uh, trailblazers, if you will, for American science in the 21st century. It provides a model for other institutions about how they also can uh, embrace a very diverse student body and get them excited about careers in science. And the lessons we've learned that have helped blacks are also helping whites. We now have students of all types in the program of all races and it's great because it's teaching us that we as Americans can work together in science. Uh, I think many um, be, before the Meyerhoff um, uh, question whether you could really build this kind of community and it's, it's a tribute to the, to the leadership to the ideals um, and, and to the principles, the, the, the way that they put the program together um, that uh, it has set such a strong example for, for the country. I think the sense of community uh, develops um, not only a sense of pride, but to have a feeling that regardless of what is happening to you and your stress for academic life, that there are people there who can support you, who can guide you, who can um, relate to what you are going through because they have gone through it themselves. Well, I think the key, of course, is the fact that the whole school, as I said earlier, embraced the idea. The faculty who also embraced the idea and also the staff who was excellent staff and, and the, everybody was behind it, everybody backed it. I was so proud to be part of the Meyerhoff Scholar. Maybe it's a small part of the success of the Meyerhoff Scholars. It just, it just, it's unbelievable. It happened. To, we had hoped it might happen, but it has happened. Oh, that's the dream. For a dream die. Light in the broken wing bird that cannot fly. Oh, that's the dream. For a dream go. Life is a barren field. Frozen with